All right, hi everyone. So today we're going to be doing the fourth video. Uh, this one will be on input and output, another session on input and output in our series on elementary programming for Java. All right, so uh, here we go. Here's a case study right here, and we want to do something a bit sort of typical of the sort of problems that you would encounter. And we want to base, be able to display time using a, a Java program. So we want to prompt the user for an integer value in seconds and divide that value into minutes and remaining seconds and then print the results. So the math is pretty straightforward for something like this. So for example, given an input of 200 output, and this means a string, we want a string here, we want to output 200 seconds is three minutes and 20 seconds. That's what we want to do. That's the goal. All right, so what you do is you'd start up a project in your IDE whether it's IntelliJ or one of the other ones like um, uh, Eclipse or something like that. And, um, and so you would uh, call your file display time. Dot Java. Okay, that would be the, uh, the name of the file. And that means that your, your class, the one that you're, you're going to be writing here is called display time. And the class begins with this curly brace right here. Just before that, what we're going to do is we're going to import a library for the scanner. Okay, that will allow the user to input values into the program. Now, inside of your class called display time, you have the main method. Okay, we can see it right here. So that's the main method right here. And like all main methods that you'll encounter, there is um, the arguments uh, in or the the input parameters. Sorry, um, for putting in uh, command line arguments uh, when you call it from, from, the, from a terminal. Um, but we won't use that today. Then this is the beginning right here of the main method. We're going to create a new object called input of type scanner. Okay, so it's new right here. All right. Then we're going to prompt the user for input. And so what we, we do is a call Right here, we do a system.out.print, and then we're going to have a string. The string begins with the double quote. It ends with the other double quote here, and it says, enter an integer for seconds, colon, and then there's a space right here. This is going to prompt the user to put in an integer in, uh, in, 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 in units of seconds. Okay, we, They won't have to write the units. They just type in the, the integer. All right. Then we're going to um, call the input object, okay, right here. We're going to use it to assign a value into a, a new uh, variable that we called seconds right here. It's of type integer. The object input, you can see the dot right here, the object input is going to use the method called next integer or next int. Okay, and you'll notice that there's these parentheses right here. What this means is that input has a function internal to it. It's method. Okay, so in, in Java, we call uh, functions methods. And so defined inside of the input object, which is of type scanner, it has access to a function or a method called next integer. All right, we're going to call it, and that will take whatever the input is from the user, treat it as an integer, and give it to or assign it to the variable that we're using in our program called seconds. All right, then we're going to say that uh, we need a new variable called minutes. Okay, it's of type integer, and it will be assigned seconds divided by 60. This will give us the value of minutes that was intended by the user when they entered in a number of seconds. Then we're going to figure out how many seconds are left over by using the modulo operator right here. So we're going to create a, a new variable called remaining seconds. It's going to be of type integer. It's going to be assigned the value that is the result of the operation seconds modulo 60 and that will basically give us the remainder okay 
then we're going to print things out. So we're going to do system dot out dot print, not print line, print, and then we're going to print out the number of seconds. We're going to concatenate a string right here. Quote, space, seconds, space, is, space, quote. Then we're going to print out, not print line, we're going to print, so we're going to sort of add on just to the right of it, space, minutes, space, and space, and we're going to end the string right there. Then we're going to finish everything off with a print line, so it will insert a next uh, line at the very end. Okay, so then we do system out print line, open parentheses, remaining seconds, concatenate, and then a string space seconds. Okay, and, and that will display time. All right, so that's a good example of something that's typical within a Java application. Now, next thing we want to cover is where might uh, assignment sources come from. So when we have a, a structure in our in our program, target is assigned something from source. The assignment source source may come from a literal, okay? And a literal is something like this. It's um, it's a it's a number or some sort of hard coded value, okay? It could be a variable. In this case, we've de defined i using a literal, okay? So i is defined using the literal twenty three. What we're talking about here is we can assign a value to j, we can assign a value to j, a new variable called j, from another variable. Okay, that's what we mean in this particular case. But we can also define new variables in terms of an expression. All right, and that expression can involve both literals, like this, and variables, like that. Okay. And then you can see right here, there's an operator. So this right here is an expression or an operation, okay? We can also define variables in terms of input from the user. So here, what we've done is we've defined a new object of type scanner, all right? And then we're going to define a new integer int i, and it's going to be defined by whatever the user inputs using the input object and we're going to have a call using the input object to the next integer method and then afterwards you've got a an expression right here to uh, basically it's an it's an example like like this one right here where we have int j is equal to i which was defined over here multiplied by two okay all right now other things that we need to talk about escape sequences so when we're dealing with uh, strings sometimes you need to put in sort of funny control characters uh, that are, are difficult to to implement and you use escape sequences the slash or the backslash sorry in order to um, uh, to implement them so we to get these escape or, or special kind of characters we use a backslash and then followed by a single character I'll show you how that that works so uh, tab new line single quote double quote uh, back, dub, backslash all right so this is a special way of signifying things to the Java compiler. It's uh, a little awkward because there's just a limitation in the number of keys that we can use, but it works, right? So basically slash T means tab, slash N means new line, double slash right there, or double backslash right there means backslash. Then we have single quote and double quote. We can use an escape sequence in a character or string literal. All right, so for instance, if I needed a single quote like that, I would have written something like that, but that's not um, valid. All right, so we need to be able to escape. Oop, that's not supposed to be right there. We're, we need to escape the single quote. How do we do that? We put a slash with a, a single quote like that. That's valid. Next, uh, we can do, we if we wanted to have a, a double quote like that, that would be valid. That'd be fine. There's no need to escape it if we're inside of a character, okay? Defined by single quotes, that's fine. But if we have, if we're defining a string using double quotes, just having a, a single double quote right here by itself is not going to work. That's not valid. So we need to escape 
Okay, we need an escape character or an escape sequence in order to, to make that happen. So what do we do? We put a slash double quote like that. That's valid. Uh, within uh, a string, you can have a single quote. That's fine. That works. There's no need to escape the single quote. Um, and then other examples of escape sequences inside of a, a string is slash n slash t like that. Okay. That'd be valid. So identifiers are names for identifying Java elements, um, classes, methods, constants, variables, etc. An identifier is an arbitrary long sequence of characters, letters, digits, underscores, and dollar signs. They must start with a letter, an underscore, or dollar sign. They can't start with a digit, okay, not a number. They cannot clash with reserved words like class, if, for, int. And in programming lang languages like MATLAB, etc., this, this is the same thing. It, it, this is a very, very common thing. Valid identifiers would be dollar sign two, welcome with a capital W, name with a lowercase n, underscore name, York University with an underscore there and a bunch of capitals, that's totally fine. Invalid would be to name or plus York or Toronto at Canada. This would be, these are not valid identifiers. Now, there are other conventions that you'll find in, uh, that are enforced in a lot of ways by the IDEs in, uh, in Java or for, for Java. You've got the class names that are compound words with mixed capitalization, okay? Um, so you'll start with a capital T, capital H, and a capital W, okay? So it goes up, down, up, down. That's why we call it camel case. Variables and method names um, are like class names, except the first word is, is by convention, lowercase. So main like that, first with a cap uh, with a sorry a negative uh, sorry, a lowercase f and a capitalized n, lowercase a, capital O, capital C like that, okay, and uh, constants, um, sort of hard to see right here, but we tend to to make constants with all capital letters, so pi, okay, or my pi like that. All right, so there you have it. Uh, the second uh, look at input and output. Mm -hmm.